December 5th, 2011, chapter 648 of its name, The Path Towards the Sun. Our boy Jinbei gets invited to the Straw Hat crew. Six years later, nearly seven years later, Jinbei reappears in chapter 851 of its name, Moist Cigarette. A few months then, a few months after, in chapter 863 of its name, The Most Honorable, he officially joins the Straw Hat crew in that epic, epic moment of him telling Big Mum to go and suck it. Then, a year after, on chapter 901 of its name, even if you die, don't die, Jinbei says, Jinbei stays behind and asks Luffy to protect his crew, to which Luffy agrees by saying, I'm your captain now, so do come back. And now, my dear friends, my dear viewers, on April 6th, 2020, nearly two exact years, nearly, it was 10 days off, he's back. Our boy is back. He's officially in. Welcome, good sir. Welcome. My dear friends, my dear viewers, welcome back to the channel. And today I bring you, as you already know, chapter 976 of its name, begging your pardon. And I do beg your pardon on account of the light condition. I might be a little bit shinier than usual, but it's rainy, cloudy outside, there's not a lot of sun, so I have two lights and they are not the best light, so just let us bear with this for a while. Let us focus on the chapter. First things first, I gotta say, and I've said this before, but it's really a pet peeve of me with with Manga Plus, with the Manga Plus website. I know we should start we must use it because it's the official and it's it's a sort of a way to support the official but come on they can't do they can't do double pages even if their life was dependent on it like seriously they split the cover page in two pages like i know this is how it is on the volume i mean you don't have them neatly neatly joined together but I mean you still have them side by side so you don't have one on on this face of the page and then or on this face of the page and then you turn the page and you have the other on this side I mean you have them like this so I mean for the guys that do this officially one would expect a little bit more of care without with the 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 double spread the page spreads because it really takes a little bit from the from the chapter because you have to read and then you have to go to the other page read the next part of the chapter on on the upper side and then you and then you go back and you read the rest it's kind of it's a pet peeve of mine and if they really want to make this appeal to other people, to all the fans of One Piece, I really think they should consider giving it a little more in terms of just organization. It's just a simple thing as to have the color spreads and the double pages just together, like all the other websites that have One Piece translations, the fan translations, of course, but just like they have them, I, you would think that the official would be able to do so, but well, that's just one. Okay, there's no there's no cover story today. As I said, it was the, the cover page. The Straw Hats and the Tontatas making shoes. I don't know what's the uh, the occasion. Maybe there's something that I'm missing, but I don't see the occasion. Because it's a request, and normally we only we only have requests after the a cover story ends and before the beginning of another. 
So, I don't know, maybe Yoda decided, oh, you know what, I'm gonna do one of these. He normally does, sometimes he does have a, um, a color page instead of a cover story, so it's okay. It's totally okay. So, but I gotta say, I am glad for the beginning of this chapter. If you remember last chapter, it was two weeks ago, um, Kinemon was branded like this mastermind behind the plan to rat out the, the traitor. And of course, it was not his intention at all. And we sort of got, okay, so is everyone going to believe this? Okay, so the, 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 the small fry guys will believe it because they believe anything. Then Jiro appears to legitimately believe that, unless he's just doing it so... But since we didn't have, like, a panel of him with a, with a thinking balloon going like, Oh, I know you didn't plan for this, but I'm gonna make it so, because, because we need you, Kinemon, and we need people to think that you did it, but I know you didn't did it. But no, we didn't have that, and it I think he genuinely believes that, so it's really, really funny to then see... A beginning panel with all the rest of the scabbards around Keen going like we know you didn't do it come on come on come on spill the beans come on come on and then you have Kawamatsu and Ryzer just just punching him on us not not punching just holding their their fists like come on spill the beans we know we know you didn't think about this we know you come on come on we won't be angry come on come on just spill the beans it was so funny because imagine if they all believed it i mean it would still be cool but this is much cooler like they know him so well that they're like nah you didn't think about that it's so cool and then he goes on well I've used an entire lifetime's worth of good luck, and it was really lucky. If it was not for Denjiro, oof. I mean, even if Denjiro hadn't said anything, I... They could have just let it pass. Like, I don't know. Maybe not, yeah. Maybe, maybe Denjiro did, did the right thing. But yeah, never mind. So... Here's the first double page, and it's a very cool scene. Kinemon just rallying everyone on every ship, just raising his sword to the skies. It's just, it's just very cool. We see Denjiro on the front ship, he ready to, to board the polar tank, which he does in a bit, which he does. And then it's, th this is a very, it's a very cool thing because Kinemon says that he's maybe he'll die in this battle. This is a very this is this is becoming a very common thing in uh, in One Piece. The whole you know that premonition. I was looking back through my old videos and um, specifically the video I did about Jinbei. Uh, way, 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 way back, back when. It was 2017, I think, so it should have been around... I have a paper with the dates on it, I, I don't know the dates by heart. It was probably around 863 or 851. It was, it was around th those two, so it was 2017, it was quite a while ago, or three years ago. And the video was whether Jinbei would join the crew or die. Because back then, in the Whole Cake Saga, there was a lot of talk of death. There was Big Mom with her powers that, would, that were capable of killing people with, with her powers. There was her own strength that was enough to kill anyone, really. And there was that thing with killing the Van Smokes and everything. The shadow of death was looming about. And I think... That when I did that video, we hadn't yet gotten to to Pedro's sacrifice, so it was still undecided if anyone was going to die at all. And I said back then, or I think I said now I don't remember anymore. But if I didn't say in that video, I said in another video that there are consequences to go against the Yonko, 
especially the way they went after Big Mom. They went. They didn't went after Big Mom. They went after Sanji, who was taken by Big Mom. But still, they went head to head with Big Mom. So I'm starting to feel a sort of connection here with uh, with that. Not that I want anyone to die, of course, especially not Kinemon or, or any of the scabbards. The bad guys, I don't care. The bad guys can die. Kanjiro can die, Orochi can die, Kaido can die for all I care. I mean, you can't defeat Kaido all the way, I think, but that's a topic for another video. But really, when I'm at the point, I'm at a point on, on the story, in every story, but One Piece particularly, when that when, whenever there's talk of death and the possibility of characters dying, I'm always like, okay, start reading your heart, like put a shield around it so it doesn't get hurt, okay, come on, who's, who, who is it gonna be? And I start doing the math and, and counting possibilities and, and whatnot, so yeah. I don't want Kinemon to die. Honestly, I, I, I think... I don't want any of them to die, honestly. I know that any of the scabbards dying would be really sad. Kinemon more so than, than all of them. Uh, perhaps Denjiro is on a similar importance level as, as of Kinemon. Because they were the first. And they are the oldest. Not the oldest in age, I think. Uh, well, we don't know Denjiro's age, but he was younger than Kinemon when they met. So, overall, I think that if they hadn't skipped the 20 years, Kinemon would be the oldest, the oldest of them. So, but yeah, I don't want them to die, especially not Kinemon. I think that Kinemon will have an important part to play in Momo's and Wano's life after all this, so he needs to stay alive. But moving forward... Uh, the Beast Pirates and Kanjiro are taken aback with all these appearances and all these betrayals <laughs> by the Njiro's part. And Kanjiro prepares to flee. And Kawamatsu doesn't give him a chance, he just jumps into the water. It's really cool that, this, that it is Kawamatsu for two reasons. First, he's a fishman, he's the one that is able to get there faster because he can just swim. And second, it's because of what Kanjiro says after a while. Uh, when he says, next time, next I will find Hiyori and kill her, now that I know she's alive. Who was the only scabber that knew that Hiyori is alive and told the other guys? It was Kawamatsu. So, this is really cool that, it's Ka that it was Kawamatsu, the one to go to Kanjuro. Because, inadvertently, he was the one that led the information about Hiyori being alive. To them. So, and we can see that by his face when Kanjuro says that when he's flying away on his crane. It is a crane, I think. Yeah, it, it is a crane, we'll go with that. But this panel is just so cool. Kawamasa just jumping out of the water and he doesn't even touch the ground, he just launches out of the water and pa clashes with Kanjuro. And but Kanjuro just flies away. It is surprising how he how Kawamatsu just let him fly away. Because they clashed. So yeah. And then Kawamatsu just gives him time to fly away with the crane. Like, why couldn't Kawamatsu just, I don't know, cut the wings of the crane or cut the neck of the crane? You could argue that it's because of Kanjuro's talk about Hiyori, but he, or, he only says that when he was high up in the sky. I mean, Kawamatsu could have just stopped the creature from forming. He could be like, nope, no, but, but I want to escape. Nope. Okay, I'll draw another one. Nope. And just stay like that. But okay, I guess we do need Momonosuke to be kidnapped, you know for them to mount a rescue mission, and then for Kinemon to go and save him and kill, Ka and kill Kanjuro, not kill Kawamatsu. I was gonna say Kawamatsu, no, Kawamatsu doesn't need to die, he's not a traitor. And yeah, it's really fun. Uh, the, the next line by, by Kinemon is really fun because he goes like, you knave, 
And and he goes like, how oh, now you draw properly when when the only thing we your friends got were those ugly monstrosities that washed away in water, and I'm like, did you really need to say that? I mean, the guy was a traitor. Of course, he was not going to give you proper. <sighs> it is funny just because of the translation. You knave. It's really old school English. This one, but okay, it's it's what we got. It's what to... We could have got a new scoundrel or... I don't know, something else. But you knave, it's just... <clears throat> Either way. Um, so yeah, Khan... Khan Drew, yes, I keep mistaking. There's a lot of cars in here. It's a lot of Ks. <clears throat> so yeah, the Straw Hats start to... To take action. Sanjay tries to fly with Skywalk to save Momo. And Usopp starts trying to shoot him, but then all of a sudden a cloud appears, an ink cloud. And the, and the interesting thing is, he's drawing it with his hair. That is really, really cool. I really, really enjoyed that. Because, I don't know, it just, it feels, it feels right. Because he has that massive hair of his. And it's cool to see that the devil fruit affects not only his brush, that is that the, that's the scabbard of his sword, but also it's his hair. Because I was not expecting it, I'm gonna be honest, I was not expecting it. And it's really cool to see that he can draw with his hair. It's just a small thing. But imagine, he can do two drawings at once, maybe. One with his hair, and then another with his brush. So, you know. And another important thing, it's his first named attack. Hukio Portrait Evening Shower. I wanted to go and check the official name. Uh, let me see if I can check it really quick while we... Okay, no. Um, but Evening Shower. That's his epithet, Conjurer of the Evening Shower, I think. And now we understand why, because possibly one of his most known techniques is Evening Shower. I don't know if he used this before, and that's how he got his, his namesake while he was with the, the Scabbards. But it is fun to see now him using this attack and the namesake being revealed. A lot of ships are, are hit, and a lot of ships suffer damage, a lot of people are hit. We don't know if anyone died from this, or from the attacks that followed, not by Kanjuro, but by the Beast Pirates. It's funny to see Sanji just <laughs> jumping on top of Nami just to take, just to take the bullets. Maybe the, the theory that those gloves are now part of, the, of his raid suit and that his raid suit is now just his normal suit, they could make some sense, because he's being hit by a lot of them, but none of them are piercing. Like, you could argue that, okay, maybe he used the hockey on some part of his body, and we just can't see him, but we see, like, in between the gloves, in between the gloves and the, the sleeve, we see a little bit of skin, and it's white, so... He didn't use hockey on that spot, unless he was really precise and only used hockey from the sleeve down on the back. We could be looking at Sanji already being wearing his, his raid suit. That would be really interesting. I will miss the, the Osoba mask. It is a very cool, cool design and suit for him, but I understand why he wants to to set himself apart from Gurma. And if it ends up being just his suit that he can always wear and doesn't need to activate or anything, that would be really cool. Because imagine imagine if he had to always activate it, we, we would get that super, that, that uh, Power Ranger, I was forgetting the name, that Power Ranger transformation all the time. It would get old. I mean, after a while, we would just not see it. Kind of like Gear 4. 
like we got the first big transformation you know the the whole thing with the smoke snake man in the anime was really over the top but after that just we don't get it luffy just goes straight in gear 4 he says gear 4 and he goes so i guess that sanji if he ever gets to to wear osoba mask again or the stealth black it's his official name he won't do the power range transformation every time but I would really, really love to see. I would really love if this was already his raid suit, modified by Usopp and um, and um, and Frankie. But yeah, it's just some creative uh, gag by by Oda that nothing is piercing Sanji. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. But hey. Kanjiro keeps bad-mouthing Odin and Toki, saying how they gave hope, pointless hope, as he says it, to the people of Wano. But then Momonosuke mans up after Kanjiro says, Oh, who would say that the general of this brave and hardy samurai is just the crying children, cowering with heights? Cowering from the heights. And I was on, and, oh no, God, I, I'm on a roll today. First, I wanted Kinemon to kill Kamasu, then I say Momonosuke is Odin. My God. But Momonosuke then goes and gives his speech. I know most of all that I am not Kozuki Odin. I know it better than anyone. And then he goes to everyone and says, Do not fret about me, that is what the enemy wants you to do. I'll find a way to escape on my own, destroy Kaido and Orochi, and protect Wano. Well, he's not going to destroy Kaido and Orochi. He will just... He will escape on his own and he begs them to to destroy Kaido and Orochi and protect Wano. Not him. He'll not do that. He's not be able to do that. I would find it very funny if he was able to escape. On his own. Like... Maybe by accident, but I would really, really find it funny if he could. I don't know why, but I think he will not be able to do it. Uh, I said before, I think what will happen is they'll get Onigashima, and then Kinemon will track them down, and he'll find Kanjiro, and he'll fight Kanjiro, and he'll kill Kanjiro, I think, and uh, he'll rescue Mamonosuke. But it would be fun if Momonosuke could get away somehow on his own. I doubt it, but we'll see. Uh, Luffy then goes again. Senseless Luffy. For such a, cow a cowardly, dumb little brat, you're just a kid with a top knot with who's all folk and the samurai. <laughs> Cut him down! <laughs> and then... Uh, yeah. Luffy then screams the whole friend thing. Find a way to survive. We'll go and rescue because we're pals. It's Luffy. We know it. Off to Onigashima. But before we can do so, the Beast Pirates manage to escape. The, the last ship of the Beast Pirates manage to escape. And he starts shooting up the samurai ships with a big cannon. Those are some big guns. Like three of them, big guns. Like we see, this is the first taste we get of the of the weapons produced in in Wano, and those are some my god cannons. Another fun thing that I forgot to mention is just uh, Law's interaction with the samurais and the samurais uh, meeting with Denjiro. Raizo goes like, "What happened to your face?" To Denjiro and Denjiro is like plenty. Let's hurry. <laughs> it doesn't even. It doesn't even give him like a proper explanation. It just goes like plenty. Let's hurry. It's good to see you. Let's go onward to Onigashima. We have no time to waste. Shinobu apologizes, but Kinemon of course says the important thing is that you are well. They will not take Momonosuke's life, so we still have time. And Lois go like this is not your meeting point, <laughs> and they all go say. We appreciate your help. And he's like, I'm not helping you get off. It's slow. They'll, they'll probably board either Luffy's ship or Kyoshiro's ship. Uh, I think they should board Kyoshiro's ship 
just because then they they would be all together but and because Luffy's ship is already way too crowded because some things are there and whatnot. So so yeah. Then the destruction begins, we see the cannons and we see the Alliance trying to move forward amidst the cannon fire. Kid is just nonchalantly saying, sink all the samurai ships you want, see if I care. Well, you will kind of lose some manpower there, Mr. Kid. Mr. Kid, Captain Eustace. So you may not want to say that a lot. You, you feel me? You feel me? So, eh. Kid is just Kid. Kid is just Kid. That There's no point anymore. But then... Come here. Stay there. I don't see. I don't know if you can see him, but you'll stay here. You'll stay here with me. But then spear wave, and like something goes through the, the beast pirate's ship, and the ship goes down, and then the speech begins. Begging your pun, the namesake of the chapter. I hail from the fishmen district of Ryugyu Kingdom on the bottom of the sea, and we see the straw hats already, the ones that were in Wano. Coincidentally, Luffy, Chopper, Nami, Brook, Carrot, and Sanji. Carrot's not a straw hat yet, but she's there because she was the group that was in, in Whole Cake. I am but a humble newcomer to this group, having imposed upon folks left and right, despite receiving a ritual cup from the boss of the Straw Hat crew. And we see the the, the scabbers just like, the hell is this guy? <laughs> they call me Jinbei, first son of the sea. And that's when Law and Kid go bananas. Kid. Or is already mad. You can see his expression. He's already mad. Law is like, are you kidding with me? And and Kid is like, Kid, the only thing that was left for Kid is it was if we saw a panel of him like ripping his hair. Like, wow, what? Because like he's joining the straw hats? For the sake of a long and fruitful relationship, I would be pleased to make your acquaintance. Wahaha, <laughs> sorry for forcing you to wait like that, but I've come back alive just as I promised Luffy. <sniffs> Straw Hat Helmsman Jinbei, first son of the sea, with a bounty of 438 million, is back! He's <laughs> back for us! He's oh, back for us! <laughs> When I, I gotta be honest, I read spoilers for this, I was spoiled for this, because it coincided with the April Fools, and normally we know how April Fools is for spoilers, when One Piece falls near, near April Fools, or just whenever, whenever there's April Fools, that's, there's spoilers for One Piece. And the chapter will release earlier, but this year there were some spoilers that said that um, the action was going, the the act was going to end, and that we would start seeing some things from the outside world, and there was talks of Sabo being dead or being set to be executioned in a week, things like that. We would see all these things. Uh, of course, it was baloney. But then, I was at another page, a, a Brazilian one, uh, one Piece fan page. They, they do tremendous work. I don't know if any of you out there are Portuguese or Brazilian that know them is One Piece X. They do a tremendous job. And they had this publication that was the spoilers. And I was like, you can't fool me. I'm gonna click it because I know it's April Fools. Little did I know that by the time I clicked on the news, the April Fool's joke had already passed. <laughs> so I went and read the spoilers. I read the text and then I started seeing the images, the scans. And I was like, oh shit, this is real. 
And that's how I ended up spoiling myself. And I was so happy to see him back. Not that Jinbei is my... Oops, sorry. Not that Jinbei is my favorite character. As I said again on that video uh, on whether Jinbei would join the crew or die, I can link that video in the description down below. Not, not that it matters anymore because Jinbei is on the crew. But I, I said there that I think he doesn't even make it to my top 10 of characters. Maybe now he does. Maybe now he does. If I were to make a top 10, I could do that one day. Would you guys like to see a top 10? My top 10 favorite characters of One Piece. I can do that. I'll do that. I'll do that one day. I'll, I'll try and do that one day. Um, so yeah, he's probably not even on my top 10. But I just think he fits the crew so well. A lot of, a lot of people think he doesn't. But as I said on that video, he really has a lot of things that the crew needs. He's a powerful dude, and seeing how he is apparently whole, he hasn't lost any, ar any arms or legs as most people were believing, nor his eyes. I saw a lot of people commenting, oh no, he's, he's blind, he lost his eyes because he appeared with his eyes closed and he was smiling with his eyes closed, but then he opens his eyes. So let's not, let's not think that he's dead. Um, but yeah, he has, he's a powerful guy, he's a fishman, he has knowledge of the world, he's an elmsman, not that the crew necessarily needed that until now, there wasn't a point where he thought, ah, you see, if they had someone good behind the helm, they could really, they could really use with a helmsman. It was only that thing back in Old Cape, and that was very situational, let's be honest, that was very situational. But who knows? Oda doesn't do anything by chance, as I always say. So who knows? Maybe the way to laugh tell requires a skilled helmsman who knows the ins and outs of the of the ocean currents. Uh, he has knowledge of the world. He's a good helmsman. He's charismatic in his own way. A lot of people think that Jinbei is just this grumpy Luffy Kung guy that goes around Luffy Kung, Luffy Kung, Luffy Kung, like. I like him a lot, like a whole lot, and I'm glad that after what? Eight to nine years, eight to freaking nine years, December 5th, 2011, I was already reading One Piece weekly by then, I saw this scene happening almost nine years ago <sighs> he's back that's all i can say that's all i can say i another thing that i thought and i'll end the chapter on this because i think we already i've already gone long enough uh i considered for a moment that this was not jimmy I, when I first read the chapter and the spoilers, I was like, yes, Jinbei is back, he's back. I was so... I had a rush. I had an adrenaline rush. I was just like, oh my god, he's back, he's back, finally he's back. But after I dropped the chapter for a while and let it sink on me, yesterday uh, at night when I was talking with my girlfriend over message and over SMS and she was reading the chapter, and as she was reading, as she was getting to the part where Jinbei appears, my mind, was like, you know that meme that, oh, are you awake? When your brain goes like, it's 2 a.m. and your brain goes like, are you awake or are you sleeping? No, but I'm close to. And then your brain just pops in a question and you're like, that was me. That was me. It was not 2 a.m. Thankfully, it was 11 o'clock or something, 11 p.m. But my brain goes like, are, are you focused? And I was like, not really. And my brain goes like, what if Jinbei is the projection of Brule? And I was like, but no, after careful analysis of both Jinbei here and Brule's powers, he's not, thank God, a projection of Brule. Because if he was a projection of Brule, first I think she would need to be close to there to even be able to to copy him, and uh, and then 
Jinbei would be mirrored. Like his scar on his um, left eye would be on his right side. So thankfully, it's not a Brule projection. And of course, it's not Don Clay because Monka is under arrest and he doesn't use the, the user's abilities. He retains the, his own abilities, but with the form of the person he copies. And of course, he wouldn't be able to swim. So, thank Oda, this is the real Jinbei. Unless, you know, Oda decides to pull, I don't know, something out of somewhere. But yeah, this is Jinbei. And my god, it's been a long time coming, really. I'm finally glad to see this resolved. I'm glad to see this finally resolved. It has been a very long time. Luffy's crew, the Straw Hat crew, now has 10 members. Nine crewmates plus Luffy, the captain. So that is really, really cool. There's still one missing. I mean, I think if we go with the... If we go with the... Um, if we go with... Um, the Blackbeard parallel, the Blackbeard cruise parallel. He has 10 Titanic captains. So there's Luffy plus 9, and then there's Blackbeard plus 10. So unless the 10th is Aokiji, some people have speculated it can it might be Aokiji. Unless the tent is Aokiji, then that's okay, because Aokiji is not really part of Blackbeard's crew, he's just undercover like Drake was. But if it's not, if it's not Aokiji, then Luffy's crew needs a new member, just so they balance out. But we'll see, we'll see. Uh, we don't know a lot about Blackbeard's crew. We know some general dust things. But yeah. Oh, sorry. Our boy Jinbei is back with a new attire. I don't remember if this was the attire he had by the end of Old Cake Island. I actually genuinely don't remember. I think this was the first... Or this is Fishman Island. I don't know. This is the King of Artists. Uh, figurine, I really like this figurine and surprisingly enough apart from Luffy's Gear 4, this is the only straw hat I have and as I said this is possibly not even on my top 10 <laughs> so yeah getting figures here in Portugal is a tad bit compli more complicated but we have a few stores but One Piece is not really that big here and for a lot of other characters it's actually very hard to to get them by at least the ways I know. But that's not the purpose of this video, my dear friends, my dear viewers. I hope you have enjoyed this. I hope to see you back next week or even before that. I don't know. I was planning, I gotta say this before we go, I was planning a video of the 1 0 fights for last week, but something's happened, university caught up, and uh, I have a lot of things to do. <laughs> but, uh, and I'm glad I didn't because I wasn't going to put Jinbei I mean I was going to put him up to a fight but at the beginning of that uh, video I was pondering whether or not he would show up now I know he showed up so I have to change that it was very coincidental and it was his birthday on the 4th of April uh, you know the birthdays of the character all the Oda doesn't really care about the birthdays it's us fans that give the birthdays to the, the characters. So Jinbei's birthday was the 4th of April, I think. So it coincided really, really well, his anniversary with his appearance. One could almost say that I would have planned it out, but I doubt it. So that's it. The crew is now complete. My dear friends, my dear viewers, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I will see you next week. Or before that, I don't know. Kingdom Come Deliverance is going strong on the channel. I'm running out of videos. I'll have to do another session. 
sometime soon. I hope you guys are enjoying that as well. And please let me know what you think about this video. And also, if you'd like to see my top 10 favorite characters of One Piece. See you then. Bye-bye.